Hello and welcome back, my Royal Rogues. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas, and welcome to another episode of The Royal Road. And today we're going to focus on the official invitation for the coronation of the king and the queen that has just been revealed. Notice how it says, quite explicitly, Queen Camilla. I, for one, have been using the Queen Consort so far as the title appeared in formal communications, and I know that this upset a lot of my royal rogues. But now, there's no reason why anybody needs to use the consort part, much to the chagrin of the Camilla haters out there. I found it interesting that the official account of the royal family on Twitter highlighted in the very first tweet that it features the Green Man, an ancient figure from British folklore, symbolic of spring and rebirth, to celebrate the new reign. For one second, I thought they were talking about another Green Man, the one that is green with envy. But I noticed that many people mentioned that the Green Man was a pagan figure, so I set out to find out more about him. And this is from the website Historic UK. However, the Green Man is an example of how images from the old religion were brought into Christian churches before the Reformation. And it's one of the most ancient pagan symbols to be found in the Christian church. Pre-Christian pagan traditions and superstitions, particularly those related to nature and tree worship, were still influential in the early Middle Ages. It is therefore perhaps not surprising that the green man seems to appear most often in places where there are stretches of ancient woodland, for example, in Devon and Somerset, and on the edges of the forest areas of Yorkshire and the Midlands. The design also includes the floral emblems of the UK, a British wildflower meadow and wildlife, alongside both their majesties' coats of arms. I'm going to tell you one thing. I haven't talked about my first impression as a designer of this invitation. My first reaction was too flowery, and that's odd enough coming from someone with the last name Rosas. But then I remember all the times that I have complained about the current state of design, both graphic and architectural, both graphic and architectural, and how modern aesthetics have killed good taste. Some have said that this flower design was too medieval. And somehow, in a strictly personal opinion, I think that's the right choice right now. Not that I miss medieval times when we did not have antibiotics, filtered water, or unlimited access to cat videos, but more in the sense of traditions that span centuries. Interesting take from Miss Daisy as well. An illuminated frame has historical significance in calligraphy. This is a contemporary design incorporating emblems of the United Kingdom and Charles Love of nature. Placing the coat of arms on top of the design actually makes them stand out. But well, in the website of the royal family, there are more details about the green man. The shape of the green man, crowned in natural foliage, is formed of leaves of oak, ivy, and hawthorn, and the emblematic flowers of the United Kingdom. The British wildflower meadow bordering the invitation features lily of the valley, cornflowers, wild strawberries, dog roses, bluebells, and a sprig of rosemary for remembrance, together with, with wildlife including a bee, a butterfly, a ladybird, a wren, and a robin. Flowers appear in groupings of three, signifying the king becoming the third monarch of his name. A lion, a unicorn, and a boar, taken from the coats of arms of the monarch and Her Majesty's father, Major Bruce Shand, can be seen amongst the flowers. Her Majesty's arms are now enclosed by the Garter, following her installation as a royal lady of the Order of the Garter last summer. I also noticed a cute wild boar on the corner and found out that they are strong symbols of courage in Anglo-Saxon mythology. Mm, what? You were expecting a joke about Meghan or Harry? No, I'm, I'm better than that. But speaking of duchesses exiled to the United States, Sarah Ferguson says royals can't have it both ways if they choose to leave. And this is like a new turn because uh, wasn't she the one who claimed Harry and Meghan were living their happiest life? And now it seems that she accepts they are being salty. The Duchess of York has said that members of the royal family who choose to leave the fold can't sit on the fence and must decide whether they want to be in or out. Sarah Ferguson, who was married to the Duke of York until their separation in 1992 and divorce four years later, did not refer directly to Prince Harry and Meghan Markle while talking about her own departure from the royal family. 
But then don't cry about not being invited to weddings. You chose to leave and now go and leave it and be it. I think when Sarah Ferguson says that you can't have it both ways, she also refers to the double standards of the Montecito duo. That they are crying privacy, but they don't really want privacy. That they cry racism, but it's really unconscious bias. Or Harry claims genetic pain when he just means he's a hopeless bell end. But the internet has an amazing memory, and thanks to Royal Insta blog on Twitter, we can remember this gem. The same Fergie who went crying to Oprah because she was not invited to William and Catherine's wedding. Fergie actually thinks we have forgotten. How hurtful was it to not be invited? It was uh, so difficult. Uh, because I wanted to be there with my girls and mm -hmm. to and to be get, getting them dressed and to go mm -hmm. as a family. Mm -hmm. And also, it was so hard because the last bride up that aisle was me. Mm -hmm. And I knew the, all those feelings. And um, in fact, uh, when Andrew went with the girls, we mm -hmm. were talking all morning and he was saying, it's okay, just remember we had such a good day, our wedding was so perfect, and mm -hmm. you know, because we're such a unit together. It, I, he made me feel very part of the day on April the 29th. Definitely, there's no shortage of people who want to rewrite history, or at least their history, for their own convenience. And in some amazing confirmations, Prince George is to become the youngest future king to play an official role at a coronation, having been named one of his grandfather's four pages of honor. The nine-year-old will be tasked with carrying the king's robes alongside three other pages of honor. Schoolboys Lord Oliver Chumley, Nicholas Barclay, and Ralph Tolmash, all three are the sons of his majesty's friends. And by the way, you might have spotted the son of the Marcus and Marchioness of uh, Chumley, with uh, the Marcus being recently appointed lord in waiting to King Charles. I like this kind of, uh, you know, digs at all the people that insist that William had an affair with Rose Henry just because a drunk writer sent a tweet which he has clarified over and over again. These people have looked everywhere or anything to smear William and Catherine and this is the only made up thing they've got. That's why I sometimes think it's unfair that Buckingham Palace erased so many records of the murky past of the Duchess of Sausages before she went official with Ginger Brat. My rogues, I want to share with you a prediction for this year. I'm sure this is going to be a year of profound changes. Also challenges that will test what we are all made of. I'm sure the coronation will be a magnificent event. And as in any other event, some people will love it, some will like it, some will criticize it and some will just be indifferent. And that's okay, because what I have noticed in this age is that it's so hard to have a civilized argument about any given topic. I wonder where has critical thinking, argumentation, and debates gone in schools. That's why I have learned to love the royal family, and even if they are not exempt of the flaws of human nature, they do their best to uphold values and principles that go beyond a centuries-old monarchy because they refer to the moral foundation of what makes humanity truly beautiful. And no matter how some want to take them down with their hypocrisy, I'm sure the good men and women will prevail at the end. My royal rogue is, my name is Jesus Enrique Rosas, I'm the royal rogue, and if you want to support my channel, all you have to do is subscribe. That's all you need to do to help me keep making these videos. And if you have already subscribed, just share my videos with your friends. Remember the two most important words, much love and bliss.